Hi, my name is Tom Antos, and today I'm going to talk about the depth of field, and also how uh, the size of the image sensor doesn't really change the depth of field, as a lot of you out there seem to think. Uh, I also, a lot of times I get asked how I can achieve shallow depth of field, or or how can I achieve, you know, how can I have everything, you know, that's in my shot, you know, be in focus. And really, really, there are only three things that affect your depth of field. Those are the aperture size or setting, uh, the focal length of your lens, and also the distance to the subject. Uh, before I explain each one, let me talk about the depth of field itself. Uh, what is it? It's basically the portion of your scene that appears sharp or in focus. Also, uh, different people use various terms to describe the depth of field. So, you know, a shallow or, or narrow, or some call it a, a small depth of field. All that it really means is that there's very little in focus, uh, like we see here where only our main subject is sharp and everything else uh, behind them there is out of focus. Uh, now a deep or, or wide or, or, or a large depth of field means that all or most of your scene is in, in focus, like we see in this example here. Uh, so if you want to get a narrow depth of field, then the three factors that I mentioned before should be as follows. The, the aperture should be open as wide as is possible. Uh, you should basically use the largest focal length of your lens. Uh, so if you have, you know, like a zoom lens, then you should zoom in. Or if you're using different prime lenses, let's say on your SLR, then you should use the narrowest lens or the one with the biggest number that you have, like a 200 or 300 millimeter, let's say, telephoto lens. And finally, you should be as close to the subject as possible. So those are the three things that you need in order to get a very narrow depth of field. Now, if you want to get a wide depth of field, then you should uh, have the aperture closed as much as you can. You, you should also use a small focal length uh, lens uh, and zoom out basically as much as you can. Or if you're using prime lenses, then you use the widest available lens that you have, like a 16 millimeter or 24 millimeter, which are uh, they're nice wide angle lenses. Uh, you should be uh, also as far away from the subject as possible. It doesn't mean that you have to do all three of these things to get the kind of look that you want. Uh, sometimes just doing one or, or two of these you know, changes is, uh, is enough. H here's a few examples. Let's say that we want to get a shot of this subject and, and have only him uh, be in focus. Uh, now let's see how it looks basically when we change one of the factors that affect the, the depth of field. First we'll use the biggest zoom lens that I have with me, which is this 300mm uh, lens. Uh, or if you're using a video camera, uh, we basically zoom in as much as we can. Uh, then I will open the aperture as much as I can. Uh, a lot of you don't know what that means, so l let me explain it. Uh, every lens has an aperture inside it, w which is basically the same thing as, as the iris inside of your eyes. It's an opening that uh, controls the amount of light that enters the lens and the camera. The, uh, the aperture is, is measured in f-stops. Uh, the bigger the f-stop number, then the more the aperture is closed, which res results in less light coming in, and also in a wider depth of field. Now, in this example, we want to get a narrow depth of field, so we'll in fact uh, open the aperture all the way up, uh, or another way you can phrase it is that we'll use the f-stop, uh, we'll set the f-stop to the smallest number, which uh, on this lens happens to be uh, f, uh, f4. If you're using an uh, automatic lens or, let's say, an, a video camera, then you'll have to change your f-stop using the menu buttons on your camera, uh, provided that you know your camera allows you uh, allows you manual control. Uh, a lot of times, I'll hear people say that they've got a you know a good fast lens. Uh, what that simply means is that their lens can be opened even more than, for example, this lens that I'm using. Um, you know, like a lens that, for example, can open to uh, f1.4 or f1.8, which is great, which is basically a great option to have because it means that you can let in a lot of light. Also, it comes in really handy when you're shooting in low light situations. Uh, plus, you can get you know a really narrow depth of field if you if you ever really needed to do that. Uh, okay, so getting back to our example, uh, once I open the aperture all the way up then I will have to adjust my exposure to make sure that the image isn't overexposed. Uh, with a lo uh, what a lot of people do when shooting outside is that they'll, they'll either leave their camera in automatic mode, which usually causes the camera to close the aperture down f uh, for you since you know, there's so much light outside, or they themselves will close the aperture to, to get the, the proper exposure. The, that's why uh, often people have problems getting a very narrow depth of field when shooting in bright conditions, conditions uh, such as this.
you, you got to remember that the aperture affects uh, the depth of field, but it also changes the amount of light that enters the, the camera. And since in this case we, we care more about having a narrow depth of field, uh, we'll have to basically open the, uh, the aperture all the way and adjust our exposure using another method. Uh, another quick way that you can compensate for an overexposed image is to set your shutter speed to a really high number, uh, like, I, like I did here. Uh, I switched it to 1 320th of a second, uh, which works great when you're shooting you know, in a static or slow-moving shot like this. But you know, the second your camera or your subject you know, in the shot uh, move, uh, then you'll notice this uh, strobing effect. Uh, that's because the shutter speed is set so high that there is very little motion blur in your shot. So every frame is, is basically sharp. Uh, it's, it's so sharp that it gives uh, the, the, the motion this kind of strobing effect. If for our example, it's okay since we're not really moving around. But but if you were, then you should inst instead darken the the overexposed image by by putting a neutral density filter over your lens. Or uh, if you're using a video camera that has a built-in ND filter, like uh, like this camera that I'm also using, which is the Canon XH A1, uh, then then you would just simply turn on the ND filter by by switching this button to the desired strength. Uh, now the ND filters uh, come in different strengths, or you can get a variable ND filter such as this, which is great uh, since you can easily basically darken your scene exactly as you need just by turning the filter. N now th this is how the motion blur looks once we use an ND filter to darken the image and then slower the, the shutter speed. In this case we, s we slow it down to 1 40th of a second. Uh, you can see the motion looks a lot smoother uh, than basically when it was shot at 1 328th of a second. Uh, also, when looking at the, st at the still frames, uh, the images have a lot more motion blur when shot at a slower shutter speed than w when they're shot at the, at the higher speeds. Um, anyways, uh, once the aperture is open all the way up or, you know, or, s or set to the lowest f-step number, and we've adjusted you know, our exposure using the shutter or the ND filter, then the last thing left for us to do is to adjust the distance uh, to the subject. This is often very limited because many times we can't move the camera closer or further away since it really changes our framing. But you know, for this example, let's just say we don't care how close we are to the subject. Uh, we just want to see a bit of his face and then have everything behind them be out of focus. So since we know that if we want to create a narrow depth of field, we have to be as close to the subject as possible, we'll move to about 8 feet away. Uh, b before that, we were uh, 20 feet away, uh, or, or 25 feet away, somewhere, somewhere around there. Uh, th this is how the shot looks uh, at this distance. If we keep all the settings uh, the same, but we move in even closer to only about 3 feet away from the subject's face, then this is the, the final effect that we get. Um, as you can see, the depth of field is so narrow that we can't even keep his, his whole face in, in focus. Um, so, so now l let's say that, that we do want to have the whole face be in focus, but, but not the background. Uh, we can close the aperture a bit more, since we know that, that, the, that the, the more the close the aperture is, or the higher the f-step number, then the wider the depth of field. So we'll set it to f, uh, f16, for example, which, which looks like this now. Uh, it's a little bit more in focus uh, now. Uh, we, we can see pretty much the whole face is in focus, and and even a, a part of his jacket now is is is, uh, is sharper. Uh, we can also, uh, for example, do this basically another way. We can, for example, leave the aperture the same as before, which was f4, and simply move the camera further away from our subject to about 12 feet away. Uh, and then, as you can see, the depth of field is wide enough where the whole face is in focus. If we wanted to get even more of our scene in focus, then we'd simply close the aperture uh, as much as we can. Uh, on this lens, that is uh, f32, uh, which, uh, which looks like this. R right away, we notice that the background is a lot sharper than it was before. Uh, now, let's say that we want this scene to have everything you know, be in focus. Then we know that the last thing we can do is to use the smallest focal length lens or, or the widest lens that we have available. So we'll use this 16mm uh, lens uh, and set it at f22, uh, which looks like this. In fact, this lens is so wide that, that even if we were to move in closer to the subject, everything is still pretty much in focus. And now let, let's look at the same example using a video camera. Uh, I'll, I'll be using the Canon X-H A1, which has a one-third inch uh, image sensor. Uh, 
uh, for the widest depth of field, we'll use the lowest focal length, uh, or basically we'll zoom out as much as possible. And we'll set our f-stop number to, to f9.5, which happens to be the, the highest uh, f-stop setting on this camera. Now, uh, to get a narrow depth of field, we'll move the camera as close as we can uh, fo focus this lens, which is uh, about 10 feet away once we zoom, uh, zoom all the way in. Uh, also, we'll open the aperture as much as we can, uh, which happens to be f3.4. Uh, and as you can see, it's a pretty shallow-looking depth of field. And in fact, it looks very similar to what we got using our digital SLR on the 300mm lens. Uh, even once we move the video camera a little bit further away from the subject, about uh, 15 feet away, uh, as you can see, you can also get uh, both a narrow and a wide depth of field on a video camera, uh, two, uh, you know, you just basically got to know, you know, how to control that. So remember that as long as you're shooting with a, with a camera that allows you manual control uh, over the aperture or the f-stop and also lets you either change out the lenses or zoom in or, or zoom out, then you can control how much depth of field you have in your, in your scene. Uh, th this stuff ju doesn't just happen by magic. It's, it it's all has to be decided by you. And now, one common myth that I hear is that the way to control the depth of field is by having a camera with a larger uh, image sensor, which is, uh, which is basically completely false. Uh, image sensors don't change the actual depth of field. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to get really angry when, when, they hear the, when they hear me say that because uh, they maybe spend you know, money on a newer, newer camera with a bigger image sensor. But what you, what you got to understand is that um, the only thing that changes when using a camera with a bigger image sensor versus a, 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 you know, a camera with a smaller sensor is, is just the framing. Um, simply put, with a larger image sensor, it is easier to get a shallow depth of field because you're not cropping in as much on your image. Uh, for example, let's look at the scene that's now shot using the Canon 5D Mark II and a 50mm lens that's open all the way to f1.8. Um, this, this is how it looks, and here is the same scene, but shot using the 7D and the exact same 15, 50mm lens. Both examples were shot from the same distance, but because the 7D has a smaller sensor, uh, the, the image is basically cropped in a lot more. Now, now if we were to, to take the, that image that we got using the Canon 5D and crop it in digitally to about the same framing, then you'll see that the depth of field in both images is exactly the same. So really, the only thing that changed between the two cameras is, is just the framing. Uh, we're in a, a bit closer on the subject simply because the smaller image sensor res results in a, in a cropped image. So now, if you, we wanted to get the same framing as we got with the 5D, but using the 7D, we in fact have to move further away from the subject, which then results in this image. Now here we can see a slight difference in the depth of field between the 7D and the 5D. But you still, you got to remember uh, that, that it's not the camera or the image sensor that made that difference, but only our distance to the actual subject, uh, which, like I said before, is, is one of the three factors that affects depth of field. So in reality, the image sensor size doesn't change the depth of field, but, but in practical terms, it's just, you know, it's, it's easier to get a shallow depth of field when using a camera with a larger sensor, simply because you're, you're not crapping so much of your image, so in fact, you don't have to move further away from your subject to get the same framing. Uh, all right, uh, that's it. Uh, I, I hope this tutorial didn't confuse you guys too much, uh, but if you have any questions, then just leave them below in the comment box, and uh, I'll try to answer uh, as many as I can. Also, stay tuned for the next tutorial, where, where I'll be showing you guys how to set up this cool little scene. Uh, later. Later.